the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom Is it okay if I give you a lot of cottage cheese? Yes, please. Are we finishing the bottle? Yeah, I'm just finishing the thing. Yesterday was warm, excellent wind, great current, like everything was perfect. So nice. Today, not so much. So today's cold, wind straight on the nose, and just really cold. So it's too cold to have the birds outside in this. So Maddie's inside on bird duty, making sure they don't eat the inside of the boat because, you know, they like to chew on wood. There's a lot of wood in there. So I'm going to get the anchor up. We're at slack water and we'll just start motoring straight into the wind. As the current changes and the tide starts going out, it'll start sucking us out and we'll make our way towards Jacksonville. Now we got a small section to get through Jacksonville, like the Jacksonville Inlet, get across it, and then we're gonna anchor in Two Sisters or Twin Sisters or Sisters Creek, something like that. Like that. Waiting for the tide to change. I got the anchor up while it was slack water because that's the easiest way to get it up because the boat just kind of sits with the wind. If there's any current, like wind over tide type situation, it's just such a pain to get the anchor up. And there we need two people, like one person at the helm to steer the boat and the current, and the other person cranking. So up ahead is an area where the current flows at like four knots. So it's gonna be crazy fast going through those narrow parts. Uh, seven miles to go to the uh, next stop we wanna wait in. Okay, we made it, we're anchored. There is a free dock, but the problem with free docks is a lot of people tie up to them and it's the weekend that's coming. So like, this is Saturday. So I don't know if on Saturday and Sunday, a bunch of boats are gonna come in, try and tie up and like hit us. So we're anchored across from it. We're gonna chill here or thaw here for a couple days. You know, let the batteries recharge with the solar panels and then keep making our way north. Well, not every day is, you know, roses and unicorns when you're sailing. But the nice part about the ICW is if it's really, really awful out, you don't have to deal with it. You can just stay inside. So we got the heat on, we got Netflix, I got some projects that are inside projects. So we're just doing those instead. And uh, once the weather is not, you know, 50 degrees raining and blowing like crazy right on the nose, we'll head out again. frigid day. It is so cold. Oh my god. <clears throat> it is extremely cold out, but we're gonna make miles nonetheless. Uh, we've got the birds out here in their coats, we've got Morty out here, and it's just a kind of a dreary, nasty day. But since we're in the ICW, it's not that bad. So we're just going to kind of chug along to the next inlet. through me. 
You're welcome. Okay, so we are making our way north, and the way we do it with the tides is when you have two inlets, water's flowing in on both, and then when it flows in, it then floods towards the middle. So if you can get to the middle by high tide, then you'll make it past, and you'll keep going on the ebbing tide, and you'll flow out again. So you'll like make your way up and through, and that's how we did that 25 mile run that other day, or 28 mile, the really long run, because we came in with the tide and then we crossed the midpoint and then started getting sucked out with the next one. Now the issue we're having is we're going a little quicker than I anticipated. So we're approaching, we're past the midpoint, so now we're starting to fight the flooding tide that's still coming in. We've got about an hour of this before the tide changes and starts pulling us back out with it. So just a little more revs on the motor and we should be able to get there anyway. All right, Herbie is going to drop the anchor here in Nassau Inlet. Yes, Charlie, hello. Mwah. And uh, I think we are all glad that we're here <laughs> because it is freezing outside. I don't know if we've mentioned that. There goes the anchor. <laughs> we're all very cold and we're all ready to spend some nice time down in the cabin with the fire. We have a diesel heater, which we absolutely love. It's like one of the best things on this boat. <laughs> And uh, Herbie got it way back before we left because we were full-time liveaboards just in a marina in Baltimore before we left for these travels four and a half years ago. And the diesel heater was indispensable during the cold, cold Baltimore winters. So we didn't really expect to have to use it down here in Florida, but here we are. And <laughs> that's the reality. Oh, yeah. Take this off. I think Charlie wants some peanut butter. I should say so. Okay, but I'm gonna get more you to shore. Okay. Love you. Love you. Yay! Here you go. Oh yeah! That feels good. That feels good. Jamaican. It's this kind of masala that my mom gave me the recipe for. So I'm excited to try it. It's just chickpea masala. One of the easiest things I've ever made ever. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be good, but we'll find out. We've got the generator running, uh, trying to get our batteries back up because there has been no sun for the past three days. So we're just working on that and uh, Hopefully we'll be able to run tomorrow and actually get to Fernandina, which I'm really excited about because we haven't been to Fernandina since we came down the ICW. We actually went outside for that part. So yesterday was just rainy, cold, and miserable. Today is rainy here, but not rainy where we're going. So I'd rather, you know, pick up the anchor and go somewhere nicer. Meanwhile, the birds are just being insane. Oh my god, girls, what is your deal? Just going crazy. <gasps> yeah, so, gonna get the anchor up, gonna get out of here, and gonna go find somewhere with some peace and quiet. <laughs> Jesus. So loud!
Okay, the plan's really simple. We come in on the incoming tide, get to like the halfway point, and then start riding out the ebb tide. In order to time it in this one span, we had to go a little bit before it would be perfect timing. There's like a little gap that we had to run against the tide, but it's a tiny tide, like three tenths of a knot. It's not really a tide. So all we do is just look at the pilings because they are fixed. That or the fish traps because there's plenty of those and see if they have a wake and which way it's going. So right now, it's finally slack water. So the tide's gonna start changing and start sucking us out with it. So that is how we make so many miles with uh, very little juice. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We do this every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. When the inlets are pretty close, like in this case, we're going to do 12 miles. Because that's it. Then we run out of water before the next inlet. So this is going to get us all the way to Amelia Island, to uh, Fernandina, which is really awesome because apparently four years ago, we were here. So we're gonna anchor in the same spot again. Dinghy to the same marina, go to the same dinghy dock, and eat somewhere. Probably a new restaurant because of, you know, COVID and stuff, everything seems to have closed and reopened under a new name. I have birds. So one of my friends, he summers up in like northern areas like Maine, and then in the winter he heads down to Mexico. And he just goes up and down the coast every year. And he's been telling me for years, Amelia Island, Cumberland Island, like this whole section, Georgia, all that is like his favorite part of the ICW because it's just so picturesque and serene and peaceful and the birds and the dolphins. And the nice thing with the electric is we get to enjoy the sounds of the birds because we don't have that, you know, thumpy thump motor going. It is serene and picturesque and we've seen dolphins. made it to Fernandina. Now it's just so cold and as you guys know Dyneema rigging expands when it gets colder. It's kind of like water. It you know turns into ice and gets bigger. So this is our shrouds. They are super light. This is a forward lower. This is our aft lower with a boat hook on it. Just wee. The cap shrouds pretty darn loose and then our and then our check stay. Just super loose there. And last but not least, the head stay. Wee! <laughs> so, yeah, they're uh, they're really loose. It's just, it's cold. Now we could tighten them up, but then we have to remember to loosen them when it gets warm again. Or, or in the ICW, it's cold. I don't want to mess with the sails, and now we have the batteries to actually go somewhere. So what we've been doing is just flying our staysail when the wind is right to pull us along. And then, you know, a sagging head stay or a sagging inner force stay for the staysail isn't that big of a deal because it, it just makes the sail build and actually generate more power that way. So it it's working. So we're just really excited to be here again and also to go get a meal ashore because we haven't eaten out in a while and we're kind of running low on food. So we need to get some groceries and provision and all that stuff, especially because next stop is gonna be Georgia, which I've never been in Georgia by boat ever. So I'm really excited for that. It's just, oh, so much is happening. And the really cool part, we're running the boat on just three of our batteries. So we'll start off with one, and I got the other two turned off. When it gets low, we switch to the second one, then we go to the third. And it's been really nice because before what it would happen is we'd be motoring along and everything's going well, and then all of a sudden it just like is out of juice. It's really nice. It's kind of like the way that we manage our water and our water tanks when we're crossing oceans. We have eight separate water tanks. So we open one at a time. We start off and then we go through the water and then as we need, we go you know, 
closing the empty ones and then opening one tank at a time. And we just ration our resources that way and we do just fine. It's really nice. And you know right away, how much do I have? Because I know I have so many extra units left. Herbie's gone to take Morty to shore. We are in love with our electric outboard. Salty Pelican, which is where we went on our last night at Fernandina. Yeah, we went there with Jessica and Ryan. <laughs> From Jessica and Ryan's Adventures. And we know that because we just watched our old video of Fernandina that we published four years ago. It was like crazy to see our horrible editing. <laughs> <laughs> We've improved. <laughs> okay, because we're in Florida, we got fried gator bites. <laughs> Gator bites are usually made out of gator tails. These are things that we did not know until we came south. <laughs> yeah. The anchor's up and we're headed to Cumberland Island. So on the charts, on Navionics for example, you'll see ranges listed. There are a black bar with a star at the bottom. All right, we, were, we came here searching for wild horses and boom. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas. <laughs>